Can we ask, who's in the house? We would like you to speak to us. Electronic voice phenomena. The recording of paranormal voices that should not be there. What do you consider successful when you come to a house? One EVP, two, five? One. It's kind of a three-way communication. There's the person recording, there's the person in the etheric that decides that they're going to communicate with us, and then this little piece of equipment. There's a difference between threatening and negative. I asked how many people were in the house, and I was told 13. We've been doing this for 15 years. We've never gotten a threatening EVP. It's an opportunity for them to speak when we're listening. We actually just consider ourselves experimenters. We're, we're trying to learn to understand what the phenomena is and how it works and what it implies, but uh, you can say we're paranormal investigators. If someone told you both 25 years ago what you would be doing today, you would say to them what? You're crazy. Yeah, yeah. But just for a moment, think what if that is a person on the other side speaking to us. The implications are just profound. Tom and Lisa Butler are paranormal investigators who've devoted their lives to exploring the unexplainable. We'll follow them on an intimate journey, first to a haunted castle in the Hollywood Hills, and then to a Chicago nightclub with a rich history of paranormal activity. They'll attempt not only to hear voices from the other side, but to open a door of communication between this world and the next. You've lived here about 30 years. What is it that attracted you to this house and kept you here for so long? When I first came into the home, I felt immediately uh, that the house was shrouded in an aura of mysticism, a surrealistic feeling. What do you do when you first walk into a house? I guess you just kind of get a feel of it. There is an energy here and we're just going to have to work with it a little bit and see what we're sensing. If I go into a brand new home, it's like it's dead. The home is dead. This home is very old, but it's very much alive. So there's a history here? Yes. Would that then transfer to the home in your experience? It very much could. So we're going to go into a bedroom up here, I think. Interesting, in this room, okay, I feel almost, I feel, uh, almost like a barometric pressure. All right, um, I'm going to try and record for a second here. We don't mean to intrude on your space. We mean you no harm. We'd like a message from you. That energy is still going somewhere. Do you feel an energy in this house? From the beginning. We were up here just a second ago, and Tom felt like um, there was somebody that didn't want us in the room. So perhaps that's why there's no communication now? Perhaps they've left. Should we go to yes. another part then? OK, let's okay. do that. This is a little alcove going toward the outside. A lot of times in a small area, it depends on how much traffic, but we'll, we'll pick up things in small areas. So again, we ask if somebody is here with us, we mean you no harm, we'd like to know about you. Can you tell us your name? Thank you so much for speaking to us. Okay. Oh, wait a minute, there's a red light here. Mm -hmm. When your voice was talking, the light was on. Mm -hmm. When everything was quiet, I saw it flashing. Right. That's correct, in the other room. It wasn't doing it. It's a voice activated recorder. Would you call this a haunted house? Again, surreal, in, in the cracks. So this is the basement area of Hollymont Castle. And when you walked in here, did you sense anything? Somebody spent a lot of time. I, I get almost the sense of somebody with an easy chair sitting here, um, uh, almost reclusive in this room. Like an older person yeah, yeah. was in this room? So what we might try to do is ask if we can ask, ask who it is. All right. Is there? Um, Tell us about the history of this room. 
Can you give us the name of the person I'm sensing that used to spend a lot of time here? This house was Hollywood, the original Hollywood, the Hollywood Hills before Beverly Hills. The aura of Humphrey Bogart and all of these people. Barbara Stanwyck lived here with uh, her husband, Frank Fay. There wasn't any of the great old movie stars that weren't here. They're trying probably at every bit as hard to reach us as we are to reach them. And I think that a lot of these messages are truly a demonstration of one, I'm all right, or two, you're gonna be all right too. Well, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is stretch that out. The very first recording, you're going to get your your best voice. Now, you've isolated a portion. I see you highlight an area. Right. Right. And usually I loop it back and forth. You think that's a voice saying hi? Yeah. Yeah, let's take it in a larger context. But there's a lot of noise before it. But you believe that to be an EVP? Right. We were all together. None of us said hi or I or anything. Okay. And, and once again, we'll verify that with the other recordings to make sure, but it sounds, it, in, in a way it's kind of appropriate because what we're doing is just walking upstairs into that area. There are a lot of levels here, a lot of locations. Okay. We're gonna go okay. to several of them. You'll lead us through. When you get a sense of something, we'll stop. All we'll right. talk about it, okay? All so right. why don't we go? Right. Good. When we go into an area like this, we think we sense that there's an entity in there. In effect, we're asking a stranger to talk to us. Amazing place. So when we talk to them, we treat them with respect, ask them if they would talk to us. And so that's part of what this is about. This is Tom and Lisa Butler, and we would like to make communication with, with whoever is here. I can feel your presence. Can you tell me? who you are. Some will tell you about uh, the disembodied lights in some of the darkened hallways that are unaccountable. Glass bottles being thrown from shelves by unseen hands have been recorded. And actual outlines, recognizable outlines of people that come back again and again. Um, I think that this person might not want to speak to us, so... There are cold spots in the building, even on the hottest nights. We mean you no harm. We simply would like to communicate with the beings that are in this building. Why have you stayed here? All right, thank you for communicating. It's very interesting that this is quieter. I felt like this is quieter than that hallway and yet we were picking up, definitely yeah. picking up something. Okay. And it got colder. You go with what you sense. You trust it and go with it. That's why when Lisa's looking over in that corner, it's better for us to go take a look than to ignore it. You can go this way, you can go this way. You're led. <laughs> you want to go this way. It's much like uh, the little tingling at the back of your neck when someone walks into the room and you look to see where they are and, and there's nobody there. So far, what I'm feeling is locations, definite locations. Um, where something guess, happened, you think? or I don't know. It, it's like a, a palpable difference in how I feel right now and where we're going to go in just a few minutes. There's one area that makes me very, very sad, and I haven't experienced that before, actually. So it'll be very interesting to record in that area. What is this terrible sadness I feel here? Why do you stay here? Do you know that you're dead? During the Great Chicago Fire, uh, we have an account from the journal of the curator of the Chicago Historical Society at that time, who records that there was a group of three or four women that had run into the building to hide from the fire, essentially, and who never emerged. And so it's believed that their spirits may also be trapped here as well.
we're going to need to do this again. They're not talking. And they're here. There was a, a ship called the Eastland, which was on the Chicago River, playing host to a, uh, an employee's outing for a local energy company. And uh, unexpectedly, it capsized, trapping about 900 men, women, and children. And a number of the buildings in the area, as you said, were turned into makeshift morgues. It's important before I leave this building that if I can, I get them to communicate what it is in this room. And Do you feel why. that we're intruding at this point? Maybe. Do you want to try it without us? I, I would you, like I to. We, we, why don't we let I you? Mean, why don't we let you try it without us? All right. We'll leave. All right. You stay. All right. And we'll talk about all right. it. All right. Okay. I appreciate yeah, it. Give us a few minutes. Do you have a camera? It's okay. Is there anything that we can do to help you? You know, if you just look up, if you just look up, and just, just look for the light and there'll be people there to greet you. Well, think about it, all right? Okay, I'm gonna stop. In some cases where you're dealing with spirits that were taken from bodies at a, at a young age or, or prematurely, it wouldn't be unusual for a spirit to be grieving its own loss. I think maybe we got something, and so that's important. It's okay, it's okay. So you really don't know if there's a success until days or weeks later. That's right. You've had a week to analyze. You're about to play something that happened in my presence. We walked up the stairs at Hollymont. We were about to go in the bedroom. Let's hear what happened. You hear footsteps, that's us walking, and then you hear the voice. We're going to move into a bedroom on the second floor now. I heard Betty's in there. Right. Yes. I would say if the spirits reside there and that they accepted us and wanted to talk. And did you get that same feeling in Chicago? I've never experienced anything like that in my life. This was, I mean, you saw how I fell apart. But, Tom, have you ever seen Lisa react this way? I've never seen her get emotional about it. We, we try to not to, actually, because we feel like we're trying to be somewhat analytical about it. Did you find any EVPs? We had a man who came first and said, I did it. So it's like, what did he do, right? And then he says, it's my ship. We feel like these EVPs are coming from the person that either was the captain of the ship or had hired the ship, somehow felt responsible for the deaths. And I did it, it's pretty clear on that. And when I started getting emotional, and I was um, saying, um, We are all connected. I will stay here. Think for a second about the, the enormity of what this means. And just try to put it into perspective that we have this voice on here. And not only that, but they just responded to something we asked. What bigger proof is it that we survived death? I mean, this is objective evidence. The most logical thing for us all to do now is to revisit what we call death and change it to something else as, like we say, the transition or the other side. After you get past the shock, you start looking for the reassurance. And that's what we hope to have people do.